Thank you, Joshua. So culture, it is the number one tool, the most powerful tool that any organization has in its toolbox. But most organizations get it wrong, way wrong. And at Comfort Research, a company I co-founded in 1996, at first, we got it way wrong too. I'm gonna share with you our journey with strategy, core values, and ultimately culture. The things that we got wrong, and then the guidelines that we uncovered along the way to creating a great culture so that you can create a great culture of your own. Now, you can't have a great culture without a great strategy. Culture and strategy go hand in hand. You can't have a great strategy without a great culture. These two constructs, they work hand in hand together. They're both meant to guide and align an organization. That's why we do these things, to guide and align so we can have excellent results. That's what we want as leaders of an organization. We want excellent results. And in 2010, a mere 14 years after we started our business, we thought, hey, maybe we should do this whole strategic planning thing, right? So what do you do when you haven't done something before? You go to a seminar. That's what we did. Three days in a windowless room in, outside of Chicago, we spent learning how to put together the perfect strategic plan. And over the next three months, we worked on that plan, produced a 167-page document. And a year later, we pulled that bad boy out, thumped it down on the desk, dusted it off. And we realized that all that effort was for nothing. That didn't guide and align us. So we knew we had it wrong. And so we started an effort, how can we get this all down on one page? How can we simplify so that we are actually using this document to guide and align our team? People want to know where they're going. And if you're not communicating that to, to them in an efficient manner, then people start to leave. You're not going to have the best employees. You're not going to have the best team. So over the next couple of years, we started uh, designing and developing uh, different strategic plans. And what we found was that eventually it really only came down to three things. A great strategic plan only needs three basic elements. Those are your beliefs, your guides, and then your successes. Your beliefs are those things such as core values, your vision statement, purpose statement, whatever, whatever you may uh, you know, choose to use. And then your guides, these are the things that you're going to do, but also, and more importantly, these are the things that you are not going to do. As humans, we like to think that when we add something to a document, a strategic plan, core values, that's when we add value. No, man. When you take something away, that's when you're adding value. Abraham Lincoln said, I would have wrote, written a shorter letter, but I didn't have the time. Simple is hard, right? But when you can simplify something, it becomes easier to communicate. And when you can communicate it, you can execute on it. <clears throat> so with these three basic elements, uh, we developed our uh, you know, uh, strategic plan. So we had our beliefs, our guides, then our successes. Those are the measurements. These are the things. How do we know whether or not we are having success? People want to know. And don't do it like at the end of the year. Don't pull out that strategic plan at the end of the year and say, be like, oh, did we get there? Did we not uh, get there? No, it needs to be measured all along, the, all along the way, every day, every week, every month, talking about how, how are we achieving this on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis, all right? So this is what our strategic plan looks like at Comfort Research. We got it down to one page. Our beliefs, all right, our core values are right there on the top, then our purpose statement, then our guides, these are the things that we're going to do and the things that we're not going to do. And then finally, our successes. It has flow from top to bottom, but it also has flow from left to right. Long-term things are on the uh, left-hand side, middle-term things in the middle, and then on the right-hand side, these are our shorter-term shorter -term things. Right? So this is the document that, uh, that we developed and it took us a lot of years uh, to get there, but this is our entirety of our strategic plan. And we're able to communicate this. It's posted on the wall. We're referencing it uh, you know, in meetings, and this is how we guide and align the team. Now, you see the core values right up there at the top. <clears throat> well, they weren't always that way. <laughs> um, 
These are our original core values, right? And how did we get there? Well, we did what most people do. We got our leadership uh, team together in a room, got out the whiteboard and started writing down words and phrases, and then ultimately started wordsmithing things. We'd cross some things off, then some things would get added in. People would argue for this or argue for that, and you end up with this. We're going to be professional accountable. We're going to be lean. We're going to be fun. We're going to be innovative, and it's all going to lead to profitable growth. Yeah, baby, those are our core values. <laughs> I was so proud of that. Well, one day, I was given a tour, and during that tour, I start listing them off one by one, and I got to number seven, and I, was, uh, I couldn't remember, I couldn't remember the remaining three core values. So how can we as leaders of an organization, if we can't remember the core values, how can we have any expectation that anybody else remembers them? If you can't rem even remember them, how are they core? How are they guiding and aligning you? They're not. It's a waste. But we didn't know what to do. So we struggled for the next couple of years. We fiddled around with it, re reconfigured it, and it ended up with the funnel leading to profitable growth. <laughs> but eventually what happened two years later was that we were in an advisory board meeting. And one of the guys in our advisory board, Jeff Hutzel, loved that dude, man. He makes this comment. He's like, you guys just find a better way to do things. I didn't think much about uh, that comment at the time. <clears throat> but do you ever have one of those moments where you wake up in the middle of the night with an idea? I did. I woke up that night. I was like, holy cow, Jeff just gave us one of our core values. Find a better way. We are living that every single day. That is core to us. We're trying to find a better way to do a strategic plan. We're trying to find a better way to do core values, do culture, find a better way to make a bean bag, right? That was in us. That is something that we're doing on a day-to-day, -day, everyday basis. So I write this down. And then, uh, as I'm, I can't sleep, man. So I'm thinking, what are other things that we're just doing that are core to us? I kept on coming back to having high expectations, expecting the best. So I write this uh, write, write down, expect the best. And so from there, uh, I go into work uh, the next morning, and I'm super jazzed about this, right? I think I've identified two real core values for us. Find a better way and expect the best. And so I go and I see my business partner. I'm like, hey, shit, man. I've got, I think I've got two of our core values. Find a better way, expect the best. Now, you got to understand my business partner, man. He's like one of the most laid back, positive dudes ever. And he just looked at me. He's like, yeah, we want to do the right thing. I'm like, yeah, baby, that's it. We found our three core values. Find a better way, expect the best and do the right thing. We've been using those core values for the last uh, 10 years, and, and we drive the entire organizational culture using those uh, core values, using them every single day. Now, I wish I could share with you how to get there, uh, but I don't know, it's hard, right? Drilling down and making it simple, identifying what's truly core to what makes you unique, how your organization is different, it's not easy, but I can tell you some guidelines on when you do identify your core values, what they may uh, you know, look like. So we developed three guidelines around core values. No more than three, make them personal, and don't do the things that are price of admission. The first one, three or less. We as humans have become very proficient at looking for sequences, looking for series, right? And three is the smallest number of elements that you need to create a pattern. We use these patterns to remember things, to promote things. Three is memorable. You see them all uh, throughout life. You know, we're using them consciously, subconsciously. <laughs> life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Stop, drop, and roll. I came, I saw, I conquered, right? These are all memorable things. Your core value should be very, very memorable. And putting it in a sequence, putting it in uh, threes is a good way to do it. But if you can do it in less, hey, more power to you. I did see a company that did do it with less. They, uh, we were talking with them, and I, I was giving this uh, talk, and they were really struggling with their core values and their culture. Like, how, how were they going to do uh, their core values? They're making fire trucks, right? This is hardcore, heavy-duty manufacturing. And so I'm, I'm asking them some questions. Okay, what do you make? We make fire trucks. All right, 
Uh, well, why do you make fire trucks? Well, to fight fires, dummy, okay? <laughs> well, why do you want to fight fires? For safety, okay? Well, why do you want to, like, safety for what? For people. They're saving lives, right? What they do every single day saves lives. In that moment, we both realized that we had identified their core values. Sometimes you get stuck. You know, they had been working on it for, for years, but they couldn't, uh, you know, see the forest through the trees. In that moment, saving lives, nothing gets a little more personal than saving lives. And it works from the top to the bottom, right? Works from the, the CEO suite to the guy that's putting on a tire on that truck. When he puts it in perspective that I'm actually saving a life by doing this work, it doesn't get much more personal than that. And don't do the things that are price of admission, please, right? And what do I mean by that? What are the things that are the price uh, of, of admission? Well, I see this uh, very frequently. People in their uh, core values will use honesty or integrity. It's like, really? That's core to you? No, you just have to do that, man. If you are not honest, if you don't act with integrity, you're not going to have employees. You're not going to have customers. You're not going to have an organization. You just have to be honest. You have to act with integrity. And this one's a little bit more painful because I showed it on our first set of uh, core values, and that was profitability. Really? You're a for-profit company. A core value is profitability. If you don't make profits, man, you're not going to be in business. So don't do the things that are the price of admission. Now that you have actually created a set of core values, you've tested against these, uh, you know, these guidelines, now what are you going to do with it? Are they just going to be words on a wall? Or are they going to be core values that drive actions? We want to make sure that these weren't just words on a wall, that these were driving actions every day. So we created a system where we recognize people that are living our core values, we reward them in some fashion, and then we are continually repeating the process. Right? And what does that look like? Well, we have three core values. There's three months in a quarter. So every month, every quarter, each month we're going through a core value award. And every quarter we're going through all three core values. And the next quarter we start over again. And we start with the FAB award. So this is all about how someone is finding a better way. And this is not the idea box uh, where someone just gets to submit an idea. No, 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 no. No, you have to take action on that uh, idea. And so what we do is someone writes up, okay, this is the idea that uh, I had, and this is uh, the action that I took, and this is the, the result that we got. We vote on uh, that. That award winner gets 2,500 uh, bucks. We then bring them up front in front of the entire company, and we have multiple locations, so uh, we simulcast it out to those locations. They can talk to us. We can talk to them. We bring them up on stage. We hand them an oversized check because, well, that's just funny. <laughs> and then we take a picture with them. But then that picture goes on the wall of fab along with the description of what that person does. So now, as new people come into the organization, they see, oh, Billy did that? That's all about finding a better way? So now they start to understand our core values and how we're living those core values as opposed to just being words on a wall. And I will say this. When I first uh, started do doing this, I, I wanted the, because uh, we also have an annual FAB award, it's $10,000. I wanted it to be $25,000 uh, know, so I could buy, uh, bu buy a car with it. Um, I thought that'd be pretty cool, right? But I will say the compensation is probably the least important piece of this. It is the recognition. It is putting that out in front of, it is giving people an example of how someone is actually living that core value on a day-to-day -day basis. It's all the other things that go along with it honoring that person that's living that uh, core value, thanking them. The next one uh, that we do is the Awesome Award. Now, the Awesome Award is a peer-to-peer -peer award. It comes with a week's paid uh, vacation and a thumbs-up trophy. And so they have to bring one peer that uh, won it last, is handed down to the next person, and saying, this is why you're awesome. This is why you exemplify expecting the best. And then the next one is our Dirt Award at Comfort Research. We like to say that we don't want just good employees. We want good people. And the Dirt Award is all about recognizing those good people. There's superheroes all around us every day. You just got to look for them, recognize them. Some of the award winners for the Dirt Award at Comfort Research, one guy dove off a, a, a pier, kid was drowning, all these other people are standing around, breaks two ribs, 
almost drowns himself, saves this kid's life. Another one performs CPR, guy had a heart attack right on the factory floor, saved his life. Another guy was uh, going to foster three kids for three months, turned into three years. Those are the type of people I want to be around. They're doing the right thing. Now, I know that not all of you have an organization that you can go back to and implement uh, you know, these processes. I believe 100% that it is our culture that over the last 10 years, we have grown tenfold. It is the culture that has led to that. Without our culture, without our team, without communicating uh, it in this uh, fashion, we wouldn't have had that success. So as you guys think about, okay, well, what am I going to do with this? And maybe I don't have an organization to go back to and, and actually implement this. Well, you do have an organization of one. That's you guys, right? What are your core values? My core values are dream big, take action, and make a difference. Got big dreams, man. But without action, dreams, those are just fantasies. And I want to make a difference in my life. I want to make a difference in my family's life, and I want to make a difference in the lives of others. What are your core values? We've been doing culture all wrong. But with these guidelines, you can do it right. I challenge all of you to dream big, take action, identify your core values, and make a difference through culture in your life and the lives of others. Thank you.